seguir. Good evening. I'd like to call uh, to order the January 9, 2018 Alexander County Board of Education meeting to order. Um, if you will, please join me in a moment of silence. This evening we have the Alexander County Baby Cougars with us and they're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Baby Cougars are under the supervision of Miss Donna Abernathy. As I call your name, please come forward. Lexi Kerrigan. Bryson Geiner. Carson Head. Brett Herman, Whitten Robinson, Brooks and Jackson Turner, Thank you, parents, for uh, bringing your kids out to this meeting. We appreciate it. Board members, you've had an opportunity to review tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as printed? So, so moved. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the agenda, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next on our agenda is our honors and recognitions, and I'll call Dr. Jennifer Hefner for our presentations. Thank you, Chairman Bowman, board members, and audience. I say this every time, but the honors and recognition portion of the <coughs> meeting is always my favorite part of the meeting. Tonight we're going to be honoring our Board of Education and recognizing three of our schools for PBIS awards. Alexander County Schools is joining other districts throughout the state to recognize the important contributions school board members make to their communities. More than 700 men and women serve their communities as school board members in North Carolina. We benefit every day from the efforts and time devoted by our board members. We are very fortunate that our Board of Education is dedicated to the children of our county and our public school system. Even though we're making a special effort during the month of January to show appreciation to our board members, we recognize their contributions reflect a year-round commitment on their part. They are dedicated individuals who are committed to the continuing success of our public schools, students, and employees. I would ask at this time that I have some assistance from the Central Office Leadership Team as we make some presentations to our board members. Board members, you see that we have a variety of special gifts on the table. And when I call you up, I would ask, you did have new seating assignments tonight. <laughs> Sorry that I didn't give you a heads up about that. But I would ask that you stand behind the gift area that would be where you're seated right now, okay? 
I'm going to recognize each board member and the communities that they serve. I would start with our new chair, Mr. Scott Bowman. He serves District 1, which is considered Wittenberg, and that contains Bethlehem and Wittenberg Elementary Schools. The basket that you are receiving is a gift from all school system employees, central office employees, and um, it's something that I certainly hope that you will be able to enjoy with your families. But the gifts on the tables, they're school specific. And uh, I need to mention this. Uh, the banner uh, is from Bethlehem Elementary School, and there are just some individual things that we'll pass around later tonight. Next, our new vice chair, Mr. Harry Shrum, also serves District 1, Wittenberg, which includes Bethlehem and Wittenberg Elementary Schools. Board member Sally Hardis serves District 2, Taylorsville, which includes Taylorsville Elementary David Odom also serves District 2, Taylorsville, Taylorsville Elementary School. Karen Brixey, District 3, Ellendale and Little River, and that includes Ellendale Elementary School. Marty Pennell serves District 4, Sharps, Millers, Sugarloaf, and Gwaltney, and that includes Sugarloaf Elementary, Stony Point Elementary, and Midnight Elementary Schools. Bridget Ryan serves District 4, Sharps, Millers, Sugarloaf, and Gwaltney, which also includes Sugarloaf, Stony Point, and Midnight Elementary Schools. And then based on the district, our middle schools fall in there as well as I guess you all would serve the high school. So at this time, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you do every day. Thank you for helping uh, uh, make good decisions for what's best for the students and staff of all of our schools. And I just appreciate your dedication and your commitment. I know that you spend many hours doing school system business on the clock and off the clock, and uh, the on the clock part is certainly not very much, uh, but we do appreciate everything that you do. Give them a round of applause. and maintaining a healthy, productive school environment 
is more important than ever. PBIS is a framework of intervention practices, decision-making tools, and organizational systems used to establish the positive and productive learning environment needed for all students to achieve academic and social success. Schools that fully implement PBIS can expect to manage behavior more efficiently and consistently, decrease unwanted behavior, and witness a positive change <coughs> in the school climate. These three Alexander County schools were among almost 600 schools across the state that earned one of three levels of recognition. To receive any level of recognition from the State Department of Public Instruction, these schools completed an application process that included multiple reports based on behavior and academic data. And I just will put this little tidbit in here. I saw those reports and they were incredible as far as the amount of work and data that was collected to be submitted. The Alexander County Schools that received recognition by North Carolina's Department of Public Instruction did so because the faculty and staff at those schools demonstrated high levels of implementation based on PBIS evaluation. Alexander County Schools have been part of this statewide initiative since 2010 and worked to improve PBIS implementation through ongoing evaluation. To assure that PBIS schools in Alexander County maintain fidelity of implementation, layers of support are provided by the district and the state in the form of consultation and training. I would ask Bethlehem Elementary School, the new interim <laughs> principal, Cheryl Triplett, and any staff members to come forward at this time. Audience, please give this exemplar
Let's do it. Audience, <laughs> Public comment is uh, there any one signed up? Okay, so no one signed up for that. Board members, you had the opportunity to review the consent agenda items. What's the pleasure of the board? Move. I move, move to approve the consent agenda item. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Okay, now uh, is our uh, reports, our reports this evening. We're going to start off with uh, Alexander Central High School update and Mr. Deb Roney. If you'll come forward, please. say and it's the way education is going that we're doing more with less uh, and that is in every department uh, whether it's uh, Dale and his staff or whether it's the central office uh, whatever uh, we are doing more with less people and unfortunately that's the nature of where education is going uh, but it is, it is what it is we are challenged every day but just some things that have happened over the years smart lunch and you've heard a lot about smart lunch uh, and <coughs> change seems like every single year smart lunch and so what we're looking at and continue to look at some recommendations from uh, some folks in here uh, is how to use that time more wisely as well and so we're going to be visiting uh, some other schools uh, in the Unifor area that have some other activities during smart lunch or follow some different things just to use that time wisely and we want to continue to reiterate to our students to use this there is no excuse ever again for a student to say I don't have time they've got an hour and five minutes example that 
These students are struggling on this concept. Elizabeth will take these. The other students are working on this concept. Carrie will take care of those. And so different teachers. And so and how that's going to come across is through common formative assessments. And so departments have to establish those and be using those uh, to every two or three weeks. But that's what uh, that's the direction that Smart Lunch is going uh, now for our students. Seminar is something that uh, really we started about three, four years ago and kind of lost a lot of its luster or energy uh, with that. But this year has, has gone back to a seminar with the academy coming on board. Uh, academy classes uh, meet every Monday with seminar. Second semester, they're going to back off and go uh, every other Monday. But just simply the things during the academy of what is high school? How do we, how do we play high school? Right? And for a lot of our freshmen, knowing the intricacies of how high school operates is very important. But also talking about the things that they're going to be facing their sophomore year, their junior year, their senior year, college applications, uh, starting already to create resumes and things of that nature. So that's what uh, Bree and her staff in the academy are already doing. We also talk about at seminars is building relationships with students. And so we went back, staff talked about that, you know, we're struggling here, what do we need to do? And so the idea behind seminar in 10, 11, and 12 is that you've got that same homeroom teacher, that same seminar teacher, your 10th grade year, I travel with you, my 11th grade year and my 12th grade year. And so this group actually meets with their seminar teachers now by, uh, twice, uh, by monthly, twice a month. And it's the simply number one to look at grades Every teacher goes through every student's grades within their seminar. We have a system, a Google Doc, obviously we're Google, we're Google Doc to death, uh, but that we have created uh, that teachers go in and they may list the student's name, and if it's red, we know we're failing classes, yellow, we better watch, and green, all is good. And so then we meet as an admin staff and counselor and then start putting interventions in place for our students. But that is done every two weeks uh, within our building as well. Instant acceptance days. We were the first in the state to start this, and again, this is counselors. This is not my idea. Where these colleges come on campus, they do instant acceptance. The students know before they leave at the end of the day whether they have been accepted. And the majority of them outside of Western, which is state supported, know the academic uh, scholarship money that they're going to get from these institutions. And so uh, that has been a big hit for a lot of our folks and a lot of our kids. And again, if we can bring it to our campus, uh, then it's going to be more popular. Something that's going to happen next year is going to be an advanced placement at our AP Academy. Uh, again, this is ideas spawning off of uh, Josh Williamson and Bill Benson uh, as far as some ideas and going to academy or going to uh, AP course uh, training uh, that they've learned some ideas from other schools. Uh, I think we still stole some things from West Iredale uh, and uh, West Wilkes, uh, and so, or Wilkes Central, sorry. And so this is a, a, another way of recognizing our students, challenging our students uh, to take higher level courses at the end of their senior year, there's going to be an application process. There's going to be a recognition of graduation if you take up to seven courses. Uh, there's going to be uh, community service hours that's going to be required if you're within this. There's going to be study groups. There's going to be peer groups, kind of like the peer writing center that you heard a little bit about where these, these folks that Well, we're going to also offer this up to our AP kids, the places for them to come and study and get additional help uh, in some of our classes. And Bill will do, has done a great job in research and presenting uh, just kids that take AP classes and the success then they have once they get to college and how it prepares them for some of the college courses uh, that they're going to have over the course of their uh, collegiate career. Talking about AP courses, we've been challenged by our central office to uh, uh, offer more AP courses. Uh, when we first started, obviously we had AP English 3 and 4, AP Calc, uh, AP Stats, and AP Bio. So we had five courses. And you can see out to the side that first year we had 174 students that were participating. Enrollment has declined, okay? Uh, number one, enrollment has declined across the system, but obviously with some of our students even going to uh, the early college, we still have, as of today, 289 students with only 13, about 1320, 1325 in the building right now. We have 289 students enrolled in AP courses, but we've also added uh, AP Chemistry, uh, which is first this year, AP Earth and Environmental, which is in its second year, AP U.S. Gov and Poll, uh, which has started this year. It's coming back next year is AP U.S. History, and, and that went away. Uh, just uh, you hired us, uh, this, uh, one of my teachers, an assistant principal, uh, and so uh, that we had no one certified within the building to teach that. Uh, that is coming back on board. We're adding AP Art next year. Still some discussion of eight, about AP Calc B, uh, BC, 
uh, which is the second part of AP, <coughs> out in AP uh, and whether we can teach that in a year-long course as well. So there's still some dis discussion about that. So, you know, we've gone from five to the potential of having 11 AP course offerings uh, there at the high school. And again, you can see where students are taking a lot of advantage uh, of those opportunities. And I think we hear so much about we're doing so much for our lower kids and we're doing so much for that lower 25, 30 percent. We're doing a lot for our upper 25 percent. We just probably don't do a good job of advertising uh, that that's what we're doing. I think the academy kind of got uh, a bad rap that that's what the academy was there. It's not. It's for all students when they're in the building. Couldn't do a lot of things we do without our partnership with CBCC and I know everyone sitting uh, here at the table and everybody in the audience uh, knows that. Uh, obviously we started our senior cohort uh, a number of years ago. Uh, this is the second year that we have the junior senior cohort. Students obviously can enroll at CBCC. This group of seniors will leave there with 23 semester hours uh, that are transferable into any institution within the state of North Carolina with the agreement that is there. Uh, and so again, the only thing they pay is just the student activity fee. So again, a great opportunity uh, for our students, our CC courses, which is Career College Promise. We have 53 students that are enrolled in those classes as well outside of the cohort. Uh, and typically that is an online course, again, that is through CBCC, uh, and that, again, is a great opportunity for our students uh, to gain additional credits. And that is gaining momentum, a lot of momentum, especially uh, with our seniors and, and the things that are going on there. CTE, CTE opportunities uh, that Susan works very well with uh, CBCC, our welding certifications. We've got a number of students that are leaving every day at 12, 31 o'clock going to CBCC's campus. And if you've not been in that welding facility, it's worth your while just to walk over there. It's state of the art. Uh, and so our kids will leave there with certifications that they need uh, to hopefully gain employment here in Alexander County. And even some of those students that are over there, it's not, uh, it's, it's some of our kids that need that. And without that, uh, they probably don't graduate high school. And so they have found a niche. They have found what hopefully their career uh, will be uh, out uh, in public once they get to that point. Uh, adult high school opportunities is sometimes as frustrating as that can be with Dr. Hefner and I and some of our kids looking for the easy way out uh, with some things and we have to coerce or beg or refuse whatever we do to keep them from going over there. That wasn't here six, seven years ago and with Linda Graham's help and a lot of bringing those opportunities, even our uh, folks that are above the, uh, the school age to go back and earn that high school diploma uh, have been very valuable for our community as well. But again, uh, with a lot of this comes some negative, and with the adult high school diploma, that is one of the things that we have to buy uh, sometimes with that. The big one this year, obviously, is our academy. Uh, it's been uh, successful up to this point. Uh, I know at the end of the semester, we'll sit down and uh, talk about what has worked, what hasn't worked, uh, what do we need to do, revamp, obviously put a lot of things in place uh, to make that better. Currently, there are 13 uh, total teachers uh, set up in three-man teams. We do have one within the math because math has additional with the foundations and the math part B, uh, more sections in it, so that took four teachers out there. Everybody within the academy is teaching one course outside the academy, uh, so that helps them as well. Uh, you know that we have a devoted counselor and director, and <coughs> Natasha and Bree are phenomenal uh, what they do. Uh, through help with Dr. Curry, we're doing some uh, language live with some of our students that were identified before they go into English one to hope, uh, get them caught up. Smaller learning environments, uh, uh, a, little, a lot more one-on-one -on -one with our English teachers. Uh, they'll move right into English one uh, this semester, so we'll hope to see successes from that. So a lot of this will be things that in June and July we'll be able to report out. Weekly seminar has been very important, building those relationships. One that probably uh, we knew, but there was no way within scheduling is math foundations, having that same teacher from first semester as moving on to second semester. So if I had Elizabeth Turner for math foundations, then I'm gonna have Elizabeth Turner for math one part B. So that teacher knows within the scheduling of how things used to be, I may have Elizabeth and I may have Carrie or you know vice versa uh, and how that, so there's a lot of carryover. Those relationships are already established within uh, those math teachers and they've begged for this for years for that to happen. Staff that uh, meets weekly, uh, that is taxing for a staff <laughs> or for the, the, for the academy folks to sit down and give up a planning period uh, once a week and when I'm taking things away from them already or they're doing things within their planning, within uh, that planning time. Uh, 
uh, but they're sitting down and they're talking about struggling students within their teams. Again, some part of that middle school concept and putting strategies. Uh, obviously, you know where it's housed in the top seat building, uh, and they, you know, the the, the, the rumor or, or to uh, put that to rest, they do have the opportunity to interact with upperclassmen uh, during a lot of their elective classes and a lot of their smart lunch activities. They have that opportunity. So again, we will back off a lot of that but even more as time goes on during second semester to help make that transition to uh, the sophomore year. Uh, academics. Uh, within our academy, and this will be one of the really the last bullets that I hit, uh, is uh, what we saw first nine weeks, uh, and obviously here uh, in about two weeks we'll know a lot more after the first semester is over, uh, that the failure rate was cut in half. And you can see that we only had a uh, number of students, uh, one student that failed all four courses, uh, and that is a freshman repeater, so that is a young individual that is a, in dire strait uh, of not ever graduating high school, that a lot of things have got to change in his life or her life uh, for that to happen. Nine that failed two and only 26 that failed the one course. So that was cut in half. The one thing that uh, has not or uh, I thought would be a little bit different uh, is the number of uh, discipline referrals. Uh, and that did not, uh, that was not uh, drastically reduced. I still think that uh, students coming to the high school, that you see a transformation. So I want to be able to compare semester to semester. Uh, and I've always said it, Crystal being in here and Janelle being in here, that there's a transformation that takes place over Christmas with freshmen. Uh, and so we call them freshmores a lot of time, that they somewhat grow up, they understand the process of what high school is all about. Uh, they understand, and I call it play school, uh, and they understand some of those things. So we'll compare first semester to second semester uh, once we get to that point. And I've only hit some of the highlights, but you know, you could go back and you talk about we, MCDs. We didn't have that. Uh, early graduate. Uh, the E3 initiative, uh, the one-to-one, -one which took for, for years to, uh, you know, the two-year process to get to that point. And so many people have been instrumental. So you, you could sit up here and talk for 20, 30 minutes about a lot of the things, but I just wanted to reiterate and bring to attention a lot of the things that have happened over the course of several years over there. And again, it is great people getting out of their way uh, and letting them go to work and do great things and trusting them to do that job and providing the resources to be successful uh, with them. So just a few things I want to share with you. Uh, I'll entertain any questions if you have at this time. Mr. Only, I'd just like to say I've had, I've got freshmen, and uh, I've been happy with the Freshman Academy. I've had some emails with teachers and communications, and it's been great. And, uh, and what I see, they're there to help. And not say other teachers aren't, right. but, but they're, those students need to understand how to do high school on their own, Absolutely. not on their own, but they've got to grow up a little bit, and um, so I've been very pleased. Thank you. I'd just like to take a moment to thank uh, Mr. Roney and his staff. A lot of folks, when you put it in the context, five days a week, <clears throat> Alexander Central grows the town of Taylorsville. It's, it's almost like having two cities. We have roughly 2,300 people in the entire town of Taylorsville. But when school commences and the staff roll in, it's like our city doubles. And um, uh, Officer Handish, you can attest that uh, there's a lot of things that go on in the high school environment that uh, you know require a lot of attention. But uh, the offerings at this high school, which all of us were, with the exception of Miss Brixey, we're graduates of. Um, mm -hmm. If you go back, like I was, <laughs> well, Sally. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if we just reflect back. Just a couple years ago. Just two years ago, <laughs> ten years ago. You know, it's a number. But anyway, the offerings today and the technology and the, the learning that takes place, you know, it's, <clears throat> I have trouble keeping up with my kids when they were in elementary with their work. But uh, hats off because uh, it's a very complex operation and it's a thankless job. Um, you know, the weather gets bad, it's, it's, it's Dr. Hebner's fault, Dr. <laughs> Gibbs the third, Mr. Rowling. But in essence, uh, you know, it's a city within a city and, and a lot of things, good things go on. 
and uh, there, the rumor mill is just a buzz always, you know. It, the opportunities that exist in 2018, such as the cohort, early college, and the high school freshman academy itself, those things couldn't even been fathomed in 1989. This, um, <coughs> we didn't have smart lunch. Uh, our computers had floppy disk. So, you know, we're, we're very fortunate and not just the high school, but all our schools. Um, but uh, as a parent and as <coughs> representative in the school board district too, television district, um, thank you for the job you do and relay that to your staff. And um, as a parent of a senior, well, I have two more to come through the high school, but uh, uh, I'm thankful. And, and a lot of things we take for granted. I would also like for you to uh, commend your staff on my behalf. Uh, I think you guys do a wonderful job up there. And uh, putting in the legwork to offer these extra AP classes, that need was there, just like the welding need. Uh, you got different students for different things in life. Sure. So I appreciate it. Chair Harry Shrum, if you'll give us the Sugar Lake Fire Department lease agreement. Okay. Um, as you know, in the last day of February of this year, um, the lease will expire. So we'll need to take action at February's meeting. And if we would like to have, I'd like to have input from all board members as to the direction that we should go. Uh, we renewed several times now, and and uh, I just I just want input from everyone try to take action at the uh, at the February meeting. Okay. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, where in the building process is the fire department currently? It right now is still an open shell. Mm -hmm. okay. And do you know what they're waiting on currently? Uh, I've heard several versions. Okay. Um, I know that at one point the, the decision was made to go from metal interior studs to wood studs, and that became a, a hold up on going back and re-permitting the process. But I think <coughs> that that's a couple of months behind. I mean, I think we're, we're past that by a couple of months, so I'm not sure at this point. But uh, if you have specific questions, we'll, we'll pose them to the Fire Department Board. Sure. And how long have we been in the, the uh, landlord rental business up there? I, I well, you know, we did the first year at at, um, at one dollar for the first right. year, right. and then we went to the four hundred dollar mm -hmm. rate. And oh, uh, geez, the I think the renewal. I think this is the second renewal. Sharon, do you know for sure how many times we have extended this? No, I, I can look it up and get some more information. But we leased it the first year for a dollar. That's right. For an entire year. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we went in six month increments at $400 a month. Yes. Correct. One more question. Has, um, uh, this is my fourth year on the school board, so I don't have the previous knowledge. Has, this, has the, the board ever leased property out before to another entity? In the county, 
Do I as far as that? Um, Old Rittenberg was leased to the county at no cost. The Quonset hut behind McDonald's was leased to the county at no cost. Both of those were zero? Zero. But another way of thinking about that, those those were those were structures that were taken out of use. Yes. And this is a structure that was purchased. You know, that's not been we've not occupied it. Yeah. So difference there. It makes it difficult to make repairs at that location and implement any construction. Is there any opportunity for the facilities committee to meet, or would you prefer that we just communicate with you directly? Or uh, I think the facilities you? committee needs to bring a recommendation. That's what I would prefer. Okay. <coughs> we all good? Thank you, Mr. Trump. Next is our superintendent's report, and I'll ask Dr. Hefner to share the monthly report. Thank you, Chairman Bowman. Uh, this month's report's uh, somewhat short. I only have four bullets, but uh, I very much want to um, focus on my first bullet, and that is to extend a sin sincere thank you to all those working behind the scenes. We have a lot of staff who have been real troopers the past couple of weeks. They are the unsung heroes of this school system, and I want to take an opportunity to say thank you to them publicly. Our maintenance department, under the direction of Mr. Dale Robertson, has six other employees that works in his department, and they serve this entire school system. They have addressed water leaks, burst pipes, heating issues, septic issues, frozen doors, and countless other out of the ordinary maintenance kinds of things during the past two weeks. They have worked in freezing conditions with latex gloves, under gloves, to try to keep their hands as warm as possible and when I called Mr. Robertson to see if he had thawed out from running the tractor, it, it, he said its heater was broken. The tractor doesn't have a heater, if you know <laughs> the tractor I'm referencing. He and his team worked at Taylorsville Elementary all afternoon, one afternoon, to get water back to that school. And when I called to see if he had thawed out, he was like, oh, Dr. Hefner, it's just another day. It's just part of the job. They've never complained one time. The transportation department, under the direction of Mr. John McCurdy, he has five additional employees serving, again, the entire school system. This group has gone to every school, cranked every bus, to ensure that they would start on those cold mornings. They've worked on buses when they would not crank, and they have worked to thaw brake lines when there were issues with brake lines. All of this happened at every school in the freezing conditions prior to the bus routes starting as early as 5.30 a.m. in the mornings. Again, not one complaint. They all say it's part of the job, Dr. Hefner. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> bus drivers. We have 53 buses in our school system that roll every day, two times a day. Our bus drivers have had to get on extremely cold buses make changes in pickup schedules at the last minute, and work to ensure that children could get into their <coughs> homes in the afternoons when they were dropped off. They didn't want any child left stranded in the cold for a pickup or a drop off during the past two weeks. Again, 
It's just part of our job, Dr. Hefner. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> the weather team is made up of Dr. Bill Griffin, Mr. Dale Robertson, Mr. John McCurdy, the Department of Transportation, Mr. Russell Green, and various law enforcement entities, and they provide information when we make inclement weather decisions. This group gets out as early as 4 a.m. in the mornings to drive roads, to check roads, to check specific parts of the county. I cannot say how much I appreciate this group and their input as we work to the best of our abilities to make these difficult decisions. Give the weather team a round of applause. As you can see, we have many individuals that have gone above and beyond the call of duty to ensure our school system continue to operate in these very cold and unusual circumstances. I thank all of them from the bottom of my heart. I also want to thank the parents that have supported the school system and its employees during these unfortunate times. I have really appreciated those that have acknowledged that difficult decisions, sometimes even the, in the best of circumstances, are still that, they're difficult. And the ones that have been made recently were certainly not easy nor taken lightly. My second bullet. Deborah Watts is working with Mr. Hope to finalize a date for the Award of Honor celebration. We're very excited about this celebration. This event will likely be scheduled during the month of March, and we will announce the specific date and time for that special event in the very near future. I also want to thank the Budget Committee for the presentation that was made to the County Commissioners last night. I thought board member Harry Shrum did a great job presenting the financial situation of the school system, and I am very hopeful the commissioners will be able to help us with some additional funding. And then lastly, Renee Stilwell made the December presentation. Her mother has had additional surgery this week, but I'm going to work with Renee when she gets back to work to schedule a school visit to Hidnight later this month. I would ask that each of you watch for an email later this week with some proposed dates for the school visit. And I just want to remind you how important these school visits are. It means a lot to the staff when you come and they are able to show off the great things that happen at the schools. And so look for that email from me and I'll give you some proposed dates. Any questions? We don't see it if we don't go there. And you'll see something different mm -hmm. in every one. And that's what makes every site so special and unique. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hebner, if I could just state that when you when you do elementary math, and that's really all I was ever good at, when you take 11 employees, you know, what uh, Mr. Robertson has and Mr. McCarty has, that's 11 people. And you spread out from Bethlehem to Stony Point to Sugar Loaf, uh, Wittenberg, and all things <coughs> in between. We have almost as many board members as we have maintenance staff for an entire school system. <laughs> now, albeit uh, our wages are a little different than theirs, but it, it's a it's a testament. And if if folks in Facebook land, if they were for one moment before they post it, if they would just think. There's 11 folks, many of whom, <clears throat> if you looked at the salary, which is established by the state, we don't set salaries at the school board. You know, just count the number of HVAC units on top of one school, let alone all the schools that we have. Not to mention all the toilets that get stopped up. <laughs> Custodians play a significant role, and administrators and teachers, but, but you know, it's an enterprise. It is an enterprise. 
and uh, it's expected to run. And uh, the difference between 1989 and 2018 is that as parents, we are guilty. We want instant gratification and everything has to be precise and perfect uh, in our world that we create. But we've got to remember when we were in elementary school, you had radiator heat <laughs> and you were freezing when you rolled in there, but by 11 o'clock you had the windows up um, on the second floor, I might add, and with no screens and probably had a good measure of lead-based paint. <laughs> so, uh, but we're a uh, testament to that, aren't we? Dave? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yes. but uh, 11 folks for all these schools and this building. Um, and they always say that the cobbler's kids or the cobbler's shoes are always the roughest looking. Well, when you go by the maintenance facility in the garage, you can tell that we haven't dedicated many, many <laughs> dollars or cents to the facade there. <laughs> So that's the last place that gets any attention. But uh, we appreciate what those 11 folks do. And uh, what, uh, you know, 53 buses, you know, we, we stress out if one of our cars won't crank. But could you imagine if you had 10% of 53 buses that, that, that wouldn't start? And you're depending on five or six folks to make that happen. So, uh, you know, when you look at the enormity of the responsibility that they have, in the weather team. That has to be the worst assignment <laughs> <laughs> that could ever, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Adam. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna move on to unfinished business and I will now recognize Ms. Sherry McCaffrey for policy revisions. members uh, if everyone's okay with bringing these back for a third reading uh, can I have a motion to bring these back motion to bring them back those for a third reading and I would also move um, to bring the others back for a second reading that are because I had some questions that that we were working through um, so if you don't mind if we could bring them all back in our February meeting okay. and I didn't phrase that very well in the form of a motion but if someone would second it, I'd appreciate it. it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? All those in favor of bringing them back for a third reading, please say yes. 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 Any notes? Any motion carries. Thank you, Sharon. Board members, uh, I have assigned each of you to the board committees that you requested, or if you didn't request, I have assigned you. So <laughs> if you're not happy, <laughs> fire me. Uh, we had an opportunity to review the 2018 Board of Education Committee assignments. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any notes? And that carries. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, just for the record, I note that David Odom is the Transportation Committee. So, Mr. Robertson, feel free to call him <laughs> if you need some additional assistance. Yeah. Especially for the weather team. Yeah, he's your man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The board will now enter to, into closed session to discuss personnel pursuant of North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11 and uh, GS 143-318-11.
to address confidential student matters pursuant to the Federal Education Rights Policy Act and the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act to discuss matters protected by the attorney client <coughs> privilege. Do I have a motion to do that? So moved. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Are there any discussion? All in favor, please say yes. 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 Any no's? That motion carries. Okay, and that will conclude our meeting. So I want to thank everyone for attending, and uh, we appreciate your support. Cheryl, Cheryl, will you come up so I can introduce you? Yes. I really like your presentation. Well, it, it was entirely prepared by me, Mr. Chairman, and Dr. Hefker, and. Uh,